Creator blessed, and in our hearts take up thy rest. Come. Which thou hast made, which thou hast made. Please be seated in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you again so very much for making it to Mass. We pray for all those who are, of course, suffering from any illness or disease. I am especially close this week to all those who are suffering as I had eye surgery on my right eye uh, to correct a corneal a abrasion that I had from an infection over two years ago when a lady who wanted to hug me, launched at me, she uh, lunged at me, and in her fervor, she stuck her finger in my eye and with her fingernail scratched my cornea. And it, it was very hard to remove that bacteria, and they did, and they did tests on the bacteria there, and it is the same bacteria that is present in feces. So her fingernail, you can only imagine where it had been before it went into my eye. I wonder what she was scratching before. <laughs> but that's a lesson to all of you wonderful ladies who have big fingernails. Wash them. <laughs> you got to take a toothbrush and wash underneath there, okay? Seriously. Huh? Because there's a lot of bacteria that gets stuck there. Now, nobody ever told me in the seminary that I would have to give hygiene lessons. <laughs> Today we are focused on having the kingdom of God in us. Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these other things will be given you. Everything. Nobody ever comes to me and says, Father, I want the kingdom of God. I want God. I want heaven. People come and they want to talk about all their problems. They want to talk about what's going on in their marriage or their addictions or the fact that they're missing money or they don't have enough work or the problem with their husband or their wife that they want a different husband or a different wife or a different family or a different country. Huh? People want to talk about everything that is missing in their life. Hmm? in terms of stuff. But nobody wants to say, I'm missing God. I'm missing the kingdom. Because if you have the kingdom, everything else will be given you. If you have the kingdom, you have joy. And in this life, it's not that we are after happiness, because happiness is here one day, and the next uh, day it's gone, it's here at one moment, and the next moment it's gone. You think I was happy this week with all the pain in my eye? You think that makes me happy? No. You think the two families for which I did funerals yesterday, the first family at noon, 21-year-old, was giving birth in the hospital and died while giving birth to her baby girl. The second family, a 20-week fetus, born, stillborn. You think those families are happy? 
No, but joy is something that once you have it, it remains forever. Because for us, joy has a name, and that is Jesus Christ. Once we have Jesus, we have joy, and that is something that isn't taken away from us. You're not happy having to bury your 21-year-old daughter or your 20-week fetus. But joy hits you and says, my daughter hasn't died, but just changed places. She went from an earthly existence to an eternal existence. This is not a time for me to say goodbye to my daughter, but a time to say see you later. Hasta la vista, baby. Uh, that's joy. It carries you through these tough moments in your life. That's what we are after in this life, to have joy. And for us, the joy that we are after is Jesus, God, the kingdom of God. Look at John chapter 15, verse 11. It says, I have come to bring you joy. I want my joy to be in you and for that joy to be complete in you. Let me read it to all of you. These things I have spoken to you, says Jesus, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. Mm -hmm. Joy is what we are after in this life. I will never forget speaking to a 28-year-old man who, whose wife told him after some years of marriage that she wanted a divorce and he did not want to divorce her. And they had an 18-year-old baby boy, 18-month-old baby boy, an 18-month-old. And she said, I want a divorce. He didn't want the divorce because he wanted to be every day, all day, have access to his child and to be married. He loves his wife, loved his wife was in love with his 18-month-old little boy when she took him to court. And in the court, it was revealed that he wasn't the father of the 18-month-old boy, but that her lover was the real father. And she asked for full custody and she got it. And he was told he could not see his 18-month-old son. A second paternity test confirmed that he wasn't the father and he had no rights. You think he was happy? You kidding me? And when he came to see me, he says, well, what do we do? I said, well, you know, if we talk about this situation, you will attempt to commit suicide the fourth time. Because when he came to see me, he had already attempted suicide three times. If we continue to talk about this miserable and impossible situation, you attempt suicide again. But if we talk about God, if we focus on our faith, you can get through this. Let's talk about the impossible situations in the Bible, like Abraham having to sacrifice Isaac. Hmm? God says, once he's ready to kill his son, put down the knife. Your trial is over. Can you imagine the suffering there? You think he was happy? I think Abraham was happy. Oh, let, let, uh, 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 let's continue. How about the book of Exodus? Hmm? The Israelites. You think they were happy when the Egyptians are after them and it seems like they're going to kill them? 
You think they had a happy time? And then, boom, the parting of the Red Sea. God came through. And I said the same thing to this. I said the same thing to this man. I said, God will pull you through this one way or another. God is going to pull you through this. Keep telling yourself the stories that God is with you, that you are not alone, that God brought you through before and God will bring you through again. What is it that you are focused in your own life? Where is your focus? Hmm? Is your focus on everything that is going bad or is your focus on all that you have? Stephen, when he was being stoned in the Acts of the Apostles, he didn't focus on the stoning, but he focused on Jesus and he was able to get through it. Hmm? That's why reading the Bible is so very powerful because it will get you through these tough problems in your life. It all depends on where your, where your eyesight is placed. Where is your, where, what is it that you're watching? What is it that you're focused on? Are you focused on your problem or on the fact that you have a God who is bigger than any problem you may have? It took me two years to get the surgery that I got. Okay, when I was in California, I was supposed to have this procedure where they poke your eye and then allow it to heal. But there is a big possibility that if they do that, that you can go blind. Then, then there is another procedure that causes eventually glaucoma. And so I kept, you know, putting everything off, having these bandage contact lenses, you know, one thing after another, immense pain, many... A lot, a lot of times. Some people have seen me, you know, when these episodes, these recurring abrasions would happen. Uh, and it's, it's an unbelievable pain. I haven't talked much about it. But I thought, what, what am I going to do? And when I was in California, I couldn't find anybody to help me. Well, boom. Two years later... Here in Vegas, I found a doctor that has a new procedure and here I am right now, recovering from it. Took two years. In other words, patience, patience, hmm? have patience. And trust in God in the midst of everything that you are going through. That everything is going to be okay. Alone, you won't be able to do it. But with Christ in you, you can do it all. I'm going to be okay because it's not me, but Christ who is in me. Hmm? And everything will be just fine. Your problems, your sufferings, all the pressures, a crisis, it's all there to push you forward, to propel you forward, to keep walking. Don't give up. You know, I was in a very small community in California when this thing happened. I knew everybody there, okay? Every single person. I don't know who that lady was that came and basically attacked me with her you know, feces, uh, fingernail, okay? I don't know who that was. I had never seen her before, and I never saw her after. Huh? That's how things are in life. The devil is after us, attacking us all the time. Why, you know, I've, I've, I've been reflecting on one thing. Why is it that today so many people are so suicidal, depressed, they don't want to live? I'm telling you, uh, every week I hear people say, I don't want to live anymore. I want to die. My life is horrible. 
in the United States of America, mind you, right? Hmm? Why? And everybody wants to talk to me about their problems, but nobody wants to talk about Jesus. Everybody comes and they want to talk about their problems, sufferings. I want to die. Nobody wants to talk about Jesus. And I was thinking to myself, you know, why is it that in the concentration camps, in Auschwitz-Birkenau, for example, watch Schindler's List if you don't know anything about that, or The Pianist. I've been there nine times. Why is it that in the concentration camps, everybody wanted to live? They had more of a reason to kill themselves, throw themselves against a barbed electric wire. Huh? Why is it? Ask yourself that question. Hmm? Pressure. Hmm? It's not a bad thing in our life. It propels us forward. Crisis situations are there for a purpose, for a motivation. There's nothing like pain to motivate you in life. Mm -hmm. To get out of whatever it is that you're going through. You know, God cannot fill you if you are already full. That's why he empties you. That's why he allows this or that in your life. Hmm? That's why God allows sufferings and problems and crisis situations. God knows your problems and they are nothing for him. But he allows these problems in order for you to find him in the midst of your problems. Isn't it that we find God when we are suffering? I've been reflecting on Poland, where I come from. Where in the best times in Poland during the Nazi occupation and subsequently, the communist oppression, our faith was so strong. Churches were bursting at the seams. Uh, and today, less and less people are going to church. There's more and more atheism. Uh, it's when you're under pressure. How about in our own country? Why is it that so many people today don't want to live? Weren't the best times in our country after the 9-11 attack? Those were some of the best times, I think. And right now, you know, we just, we all, everybody's hating each other. Mm -hmm. or the Great Depression. People wanted to live. <laughs> the 30s, people helped each other. Some of the best times were during the Second World War and following the Second World War here. Uh -huh. mm. So, Welcome those trying times in your life. They are times for you to get closer to God. Mm? In your own life. And God will bring you through it all. It's taking him, you know, some years to bring me through this as it's taking him some time to bring you through whatever it is that you're going through. But everything is going to be okay. You will be just fine. 
if we just trust in the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's stand and profess our faith.